Okay, so now we get into cash payments for my operating expenses. So we've got to reconstruct some operating expenses here. I'll slide this up a little bit. So we've got my prepaid expenses. That's the first one I want to reconstruct. And if I look back into my uh, balance sheet, I've got some prepaid expenses here. Opening balance was 8000 Closing balance was 6000 So now prepaid expenses, obviously an asset account. So I know my opening balance then will be debit is 8000 and my closing is 6000 Now it doesn't tell me anything else about prepaid expenses, does it? No. No, so that we'll just have to take it as a movement of 2000 Now... This becomes part of my income statement. So my prepaid expenses must have gone to operating expenses. And we use this in a later account. So that operating expenses, I'll just circle it in red, we need to use in, in constructing another account. Okay, everyone okay with that page? That's how we finished our prepaid expenses. Okay, so now I'm going to look at my accrued expenses in the aim that we're going to reconstruct my operating expenses. So my accrued expenses are liabilities and I can see them there. So my accrued expenses payable. I had an opening balance of 20000 and a closing balance of 15000 As it is a liability, I know my opening balance must be a credit. Yep, let me get my blue pen back. Opening balance rise, 20,000. Tick off this, tick off that. 20,000. Closing balance is 15,000. It didn't tell me any more about OPEX uh, or accrued expenses, did it? No. So I just got to assume that what went to my uh, operating expenses is $5,000. So and I use this amount in my next account, which is operating expenses. So I use that to help reconstruct my OPEX, my OPEX here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Where did I get the five thousand? Okay, so I've got an opening balance of twenty thousand. So that must mean that my account balance is twenty, and my closing balance was fifteen thousand. So that must mean that the movement on my debits was five thousand dollars. No problems. All right, next uh, what I want to do is I want to actually work out what did I pay for my operating expenses. Now we know we've got an amount back here which we worked out for prepaid expenses. So that's gone into my credit side of my OPEX, uh, my credit side of my prepaid. It must go into my debit side of my operating expenses. So I'll put in my prepaid here. Oop, let's use a blue pen. Prepaid is 2000 and my operating expenses for my accrued must be on the other side uh, so what have I got here? What do we call it? Um, accrued was 5000 Now what's my other operating expenses? If I look back my expenses are in my income statement so I'm looking for my operating expenses and it says it excludes my depreciation. So I'm going to plug in this 176 here. Now because I'm reconstructing this account, this is what I close off to my P&L account. So I'm going to have in here 176,000 and we call it the P&L summary. Which is, this is all of my expense accounts in one number. Now if that's what I've got, I've got 181 here as a account balance or a movement. 
So I've got 181 here. The cash paid must be the difference being 179. And because I've got cash paid, what I'm aiming to do is put that into my cash flow statement later. All right, is everyone okay to this point? Now that's a, uh, a step some people sometimes go wrong with. So just take it easy when you get to that one. Aaron? Will we just see like, the format in the account? No, no. You have to you have to put your two accounts in yourself. Right. Now you got to remember that this is an extensive question, so we're covering every possibility of the type of question you might get asked in the exam. So you won't have this extensive a question in the exam. <coughs> but let's not talk about that today, because we still got this class demonstration to finish. All right. Now I need to do my income taxes payable or income tax paid is what I'm looking for. And I can see I've got an income tax expense up here. So I'm going to look to include that. Have I got any income tax payables? Oh, look at that. I've got a tax payable there. I've got an opening balance of zero and a closing balance of 12000 in my income tax payable. So now, because it's a liability, my opening balance will be a credit. So I'm going to put it in there. Even though it's zero, I'm going to put in an opening balance of zero and my closing of 12000 Now it says in my income statement that I paid 36000 in tax. So that's actually, or no, sorry, I didn't pay. My income tax expense was 36000 So what I'm going to do is, um, I'll just put in here P&L, 36000 and so that gives me a movement through the account of 36000 36, So tax paid must be the difference between these, which would be 24. And we're looking to now, because I got paid, I should have said cash paid rather than tax paid. I'll just put that there, cash. That's my tax movement. Now that completes all of my operating activities. So we've we've done my um, income state or my income, my expenses, my current assets, and my current liabilities, which is what we said before. Uh, that my operating would include my current assets, current liabilities, income, and expenses. So we've ticked all those off, and you can see that. There's no other currents in either and there's no other cash items in my... Um, oh, why don't we include loss on the sale of store equipment as a, a transaction in my... Does anyone know why we didn't include this one? This is a non-cash item, so there's no cash flow. This is profit. So there's no cash flow there. Uh, so that's why that item's not included. We use it to prove a figure later on, but we'll get to that one. <coughs>